Hello, uh, today I'm going to discuss about fiber reinforcement. We, we have already discussed about different types of reinforcement and uh, the reinforcement can be in the form of uh, fibers or generally in the form of particulates, most widely used type of uh, reinforcement. But uh, you know, uh, the fiber is the uh, most widely used uh, reinforcement among uh, the two. That is, uh, the fibers produce high strength composite because of their smaller diameter. That is, uh, the diameter of the fiber decreases, the strength will increase. But there is a disadvantage, is cost will increase uh, with decrease in diameter. But uh, when we produce a fiber uh, with smaller diameter, it will be, the strength will be very high. Okay. And typically, the fibers are uh, available uh, in the form of different form uh, which are the most typical fibers are glass fiber and carbon armid fiber etc and which will be available in the form of continuous or discontinuous form that is which will be in the form of uh, long fibers or short fibers and generally the fibers are two types one is natural fiber and second one is synthetic fiber natural fiber means the uh, fibers available from the animals or from plants or from minerals and synthetic fibers are two types, one is organic fiber and inorganic fibers. Organic fiber, example for organic fiber is uh, polyester, and then polyethylene, etc. Then the most widely used organic fibers are glass, carbon and boron fibers. Then plant fibers, that is there are uh, mainly, there are two types of another uh, fibers, one is plant fiber and uh, second one is the uh, fibers obtained from the animals. So plant fiber means, uh, for example, seed fiber. That is the fibers collected from the seeds of various plants. Then leaf fiber means fibers collected from the cells of leaf, etc. Okay. And animal fibers means the fibers available from the animal. That is uh, animal hair, that like fiber or wool taken from the animals. Then silk fiber, fiber segregated by glands of insect during the preparation, preparation of cocoons, etc. So these are some um, natural fibers which are available and uh, you know uh, by using these natural fibers we can produce component or composite material where the orientation is uh, very important the, where the orientation of fibers impact the properties because you know, you know uh, when we use fiber as the reinforcement the orientation of fiber has a greater influence in the final properties of a uh, composite material so the natural fibers are used where the orientation fibers impact the properties and, and the earliest evidence of human using fibers is the discovery of wool and dyed flax fibers found in uh, prehistoric cave in the Republic of uh, uh, Georgia that date back to 36,000. So natural fibers can be used for high tech application for example uh, composite part for automobile etc. Okay. And, and this uh, compared to composite reinforced with the glass fibers and the composite with natural fibers have advantage of lower density then better thermal thermal insulation and reduce skin irritation that's why these natural fibers uh, are uh, used for variety of textures found in variety of textures and they are good uh, sweat absorbent and uh, by using these natural fibers for example cotton fibers are used for making cotton plant then produce fabrics that are light in weight and soft in texture and which can be made in various sizes and colors. Then cloth made of natural fibers uh, such as cotton are often preferred over clothing made of synthetic fibers due to uh, by people living in hot and humid climates. Then another best example for natural fiber is wood. Wood is the uh, best example for natural fiber. Then, uh, you know, wood is a best example for natural fiber composite and wood uh, are made up of uh, layers of cellulose fibers uh, with varying spiral angle and it is bounded by lignin, that is the uh, primary phase. Lignin is the matrix phase, that is the primary phase. And another best example for uh, natural composite is bone. Bone is a composite material composed of organic fibers, then small organic crystals, water and fats. Okay, and you know the proportion of this component, that is uh, the organic fibers, small inorganic crystals, water and fat, uh, will vary with the type of bone, the animal species and age, 
but typically 35 percentage of dry fat free weight of bone is in or, or is organic fiber that is the collagen okay then um, the natural fiber uh, such as cotton silk wool etc are widely used for textile coin and uh, rope repression and uh, these plant fibers have uh, high length to diameter ratio uh, which are greater than 1000 that's why these are very important uh, but the strength and stiffness of this fiber are low compared with synthetic fibers that is one of the disadvantages of plant fibers strength and stiffness are uh, low as compared to synthetic fiber which are available uh, then uh, as the next type of natural fiber which is available is uh, that is asbestos asbestos means uh, that is a group of mineral which exists in fibrous form which are formed separated from the surrounding rock and which are available from the hydrated magnesium silicate and they are silky fibers up to several centimeters in line and which have good uh, flexibility stiffness and strength as compared to uh, plant fibers or the animal fibers and these are some source of uh, plant fibers uh, that is the fibers are available from banana bamboo jute then pineapple uh, hemp etc and when we compare the composition of different uh, natural fibers when we compare wood or jute the density is very uh, low that is uh, when we uh, take wood if the density is only 1.5 milligram per meter cube then the different composition of uh, this wood is uh, major com uh, compound is cellulose it is about uh, 40 percent then hemicellulose is also in the case of uh, wood uh, both cellulose and hemicellulose are in equal proportion that is 40 percent and the primary phase is uh, about 20 percent and when we take jute the density is only 1.3 milligram per meter cube then cellulose is the major component that is 72 percentage and hemicellulose is only 14 percentage and lignin is also 14 percentage okay and when we uh, compare the tensile strength of different natural fibers the uh, tensile strengths are all, almost equal that is uh, in the range of 500 but uh, sizal in the case of sizal the species strength is uh, very high as compared to wood or jute it is about uh, 757 strength uh, 757 mega pascal and next we are uh, moving to one of the major inorganic fiber that is glass fibers so glass fibers was uh, discovered in 1893 but commercially it is available in 1936 and became popular only in 1950s and uh, which are uh, effectively used initially to replace asbestos in many applications such as electrical thermal and acoustic insulation structural reinforcement etc okay and uh, the major component of glass fiber is uh, silica base or silica and contain a host of uh, other oxides of so calcium uh, then sodium aluminum and iron etc gives the composition of some commonly used glass fibers by controlling the chemical composition we can produce different types of glass fibers that is the glass fibers are available in different form by varying the uh, composition of the material uh, like calcium boron sodium silica etc we can produce different types of uh, glass fibers which are uh, used for different applications so they exhibit uh, the typical glass properties of hardness corrosion uh, resistance and inertness and which are uh, flexible lightweight and inexpensive so uh, these properties make the glass fibers the most common type of fiber used for low cost industrial application that is one of the major application of glass fibers it is mainly used for low cost industrial application and uh, i told you now uh, by varying the chemical composition we can uh, produce, produce different types of glass fibers uh, so some of the uh, examples of glass fibers or some classifications are uh, electrical 
5 e glass then s glass c glass etc e stands for electrical which uh, possesses low electrical conductivity s stands for strength that is uh, s glass is a high strength glass then c stands for corrosion uh, that is high resistant to co uh, chemical corrosion then m stands for modulus which possesses high stiffness and a stands for alkali and that is high alkali soda line glass and d stands for dielectric that is a possess load and dielectric constant so these are the some forms of glass fibers which are available that is uh, e glass s glass c glass etc among these uh, different classification of glass fiber e glass is uh, most uh, commonly used uh, glass because yes the uh, because of its low cost s glass the cost of s glass is uh, three to four times greater than e glass that's why uh, the most widely used glass is e glass and the uh, composition of uh, different uh, types of glass fibers that is e glass e glass and s glass are uh, shown in this figure you know uh, the composition of sa would be 55 0.2 percent in E glass, then it is uh, 65 percent in C glass and S glass. Then another major component of E glass is uh, calcium oxide, it is 18.7 percent, etc. So these are the composition of uh, different uh, components uh, present in glass waves. And E glass, you know, E glass means uh, e stands for electrical it is a good electrical insulator in addition to having good strength and reasonable length smallness it produces uh, it shows good strength having high tensile strength uh, and at the same time it has uh, reasonably young smallness and also it shows or it acts as a electric insulator okay then the most commonly used glass is e glass because of its uh, low cost it is popular due to its low cost then uh, i'll tell you s glass is a high strength glass but uh, its uh, cost is very high that's why uh, due to this reason uh, of high cost uh, we are using low cost carbon as an alternative for s glass then d glass is used for electrical application such as core reinforcement of high voltage ceramic insulators then a glass uh, which are used for lightweight servicing waves of mass a glass that is another type of glass a stands for acrylic then surfacing waves or mass these figures shows the uh, surfacing waves uh, the a glass which is used for making surfacing waves or mass okay so uh, this is about different types of glass fiber so uh, you know uh, glass fibers are uh, the most important types of uh, fiber reinforcement most widely used uh, fiber reinforcement and uh, different uh, classification of glass fibers because by varying the composition of glass fi uh, uh, fibers uh, we can produce different types of glass fibers like e glass s glass e glass etc okay i hope it is understand okay thank you